Welcome, I'm Steve Adubato. We are once again talking about educational innovation. You're looking at uh, Kenneth K. Gilmartin, founder and director of Music Together. Good to see you, Ken. Good to see you, Steve. Short version, uh, Music Together is? It's a parent-child program. That's what the word together means. It's with grown-ups. Lots of times people think of music as lessons. Piano lesson is the first thing that comes into somebody's mind. But we're working with babies, kindergarten, babies through kindergarten, aged children, and we work with their grown-ups, their special grown-ups, the ones who are primary caregivers, like naturally a parent, or in preschool, a classroom teacher who takes care of them during the day. And the reason we think that's so important is because it's from a primary caregiver that you get the disposition to be a certain way in life. And we want children to get the disposition to be a, a music maker, meaning sing, dance, play instruments, be musically involved with your mind, body, heart, and soul, and your voice. And then you can get to speak the language of music in a very basic way. Then you might be ready for mm -hmm. lessons. Tell us about your background, how you get into this. I, I'm a composer. And uh, I discovered this about the age of 19 after fooling around on piano for years and playing in bands. Uh, but then I started really composing, and it was the most exhilarating thing I'd ever done in life. And I decided that's what I wanted to be. So I worked in theater, film, and uh, also I went to conservatory and wrote my string quartets. And, uh, but when I had, had my daughter at the, uh, uh, much later and combined that with some other influences, that's what began to turn me to composing in a, in a larger sense, uh, which is early childhood music education and building an organization to carry that forward. Talk to us in very concrete ways about how music, together, children, parents, how it develops children in that age early childhood age, to be everything they can be. Oh, it's so exciting uh, to do this work because of, well, really, the answer to the question you just asked, which is that music is so primal to us. Is it for everyone? Yeah, absolutely, because, but not in the way you might be thinking. It's not that everyone should be performing music, because a lot of us are not performers. Some of us don't have, a lot of us don't have what I would call the performance gene. Uh, it would there be is like, such a gene, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, it would be like if, if everybody who st learned their native language had to get up and be an actor. That's right. And so our culture tends to uh, really make that predominate in music. And uh, what we say is that everybody has enough music intelligence at birth to develop the ability to speak, in quotes, in, in, in music in a way that makes sense, in tune, with accurate rhythm. There's no such thing as tone deaf unless it's congenital or biological. Most people would say they're tone deaf or not tone deaf, except for the education, or except for a kindergarten teacher may have said to them, Kenny, just mouth the words, um, because she was getting ready to put on a show for right. the parents. She, she wasn't an educator anymore. She was a producer uh, because of- What's wrong with that? Well, she's trying to put on, uh, it's not her fault, because it's expected by our culture. But what about she, the kid who is now told, Kenny, just mouth the words, mouth the words because we don't want you to they're not saying it, but the meta communication is we have a show to put on here. Yes, and you're, you're not teaching that child anymore. You're not developmentally uh, understanding where he is, and he's not able to talk music yet. But if you look at his movement, I bet you he could do rhythm movement around the room sure. like crazy. See, music is, for simplicity, divided into two parts the tonal side and the rhythm side. And um, if you're a tonal person, you can sing more easily, maybe, than keep the beat. But if you're a rhythm person, Man, you can move and, and, and dance and do uh, rap and rhymes, but you might sound like you're tone deaf if you try to sing. But if somebody understands that and supports your rhythm development and, and then supports your tonal development in addition to that, wow, suddenly, well, maybe it takes a couple of years, but then a, a singer can emerge. I'm, I'm one of those children. Well, you know what's interesting as you're saying this? Uh, a constant theme has obviously been parental involvement here. Yeah. You know, and, and, I, and I don't like, I, I, it's not about our kids, but our five-year-old Chris loves to dance. Yeah. I mean, he'll, I'll say I'm working out, and it's usually to Motown because it just takes me to another place, and mm -hmm. I'm not really thinking of the lyrics, frankly, and it's the rhythm, yeah. if you will. And he comes downstairs into this home gym we have, and he's doing his whole thing, and, and he can kind of move. My wife and I, you know, <clears throat> you know, Nuriev, right? So he can move, <laughs> but we don't want him to be embarrassed and stop immediately. So I try to ignore him a little bit, and I'll say, um, hey, Chris, I'm going to put in another song, you know, if you want to hang around. My point is, if you 
bring other people in. I notice this. If I'll call my parents and, hey, look at Chris Dance. Yeah. That's oh, it. No. It's over. What, give yeah. us some advice about that. Well, you might, instead of doing that, you might dance with him yourself. You Why might, does he need me? Well, he doesn't. He, what, is it, what difference does it make if I if, dance with him? If you do that, you validate his discovery. You validate his exploration. You validate his scientific experiment. Sure. Um, and uh, what might even be better than that to go beyond is when he's around and, you know, not because of anything he did or said, you start dancing. And then he notices that you like to dance too. He might even judge your dancing. He may not want to dance like you, but the fact that you do it and he loves you and you're his dad, he'll want to dance too. Is that the concept behind yes, music exactly. together? So even, are, maybe, are you a comfortable singer? Say you, that again? Are you a comfortable singer yourself? No, not a comfortable singer. You're I mean, more, I, I, more a mover, yes, right? I can, I can, ma I could do Frank Sinatra if I'm at a karaoke, yeah. in a karaoke situation. Guys, <laughs> you don't believe it. Trust me, I can. Uh, Summer Dream, you don't want me to do that. Yeah. Uh, but my point is, dancing around, yeah, I am comfortable. Okay. With. Well, if you, uh, uh, I'm comfortable singing poorly. Yeah. So that's yes, great. absolutely. That's great because then you set the model that you can make music as a singer without worrying about how performance perfect you are. That's right. Then he will imitate your model and teach himself to sing in a basically competent way, just like kids teach themselves to talk. And then when they get to the music teacher, our, our teachers are not music teachers; they're catalysts. Wait, they, wait, the teachers at music together are catalysts. Catalysts. They're not like a, the, a music teacher who teaches you notes. They're catalysts who create a uh, a rich music environment in the, in the weekly class that the primary caregiver, parent or a cl classroom teacher from school. By the way, as you're talking, we're going to take a look at some of the footage from music together, so keep okay. talking. So you'll, you'll see me being a catalyst in a, in a preschool classroom with uh, classroom teachers and children. The parents are not there, but these people are their surrogate parents. And uh, we are dancing around with, we're doing a great song called Ali Galoo. Ali Galoo. Ali Galoo, is there, is there sound on the... Do we have sound? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Back out. Back out. And Back out. Back out. So um, I can tell you uh, about why we would do a song like that. It's a traditional kind of nursery rhyme song with nonsense syllables. It's a song without words. Why could that be useful in teaching other things than music? Because, you know, music, we know, I always believed, and now we know it, it supports all learning because music is so primal to us, it integrates so many parts of ourselves, the sound side, the movement side, the, uh, and this is how it can help so with language. So words don't have to make sense, can No, no, and, and, a, and a preschool teacher could use that song instead of Ali Galoo, Galoo, Ali Galoo, the way it goes, she could say, well, okay, um, Harry, uh, we're working on the, wor the letters L and B and D today. Can you put them in that song? Lu 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 lu, boo 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 boo, do 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 is what Harry might do, and he's improvising, he's integrating phonemes that they're studying in class, and he's able to exercise his uh, his breathing, his sure. articulation, uh, the coordination of his desire to express, his emotional feeling about it, a sense of fun, and put this all together into a coherent musical expression. Doesn't that help language development? Before I let you out of here, you're giving great advice. Final comments to parents right now. Oh, uh, do music with your kids. I mean, if you come to our program, great. But uh, go, go somewhere and do music regardless of whether you think you can do it or not. Regardless of whether you sing well, dance well. Don't just turn on a CD. Just don't, don't just turn on That's the TV. That's too easy. Well, it's, 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 it's not what's needed. It's not, it's, it, that's passive consumption. We're all doing that in this culture now. We're a new relatively new industry, <laughs> early childhood music. The only reason we have to do it is because uh, our grandma doesn't do it anymore. Parents don't do it anymore. We had not, so we have this wonderful work to do because of that. Well, you're doing wonderful work, and I have a feeling in the work that we did together for these few minutes, you made a difference. Ken, I appreciate it. We all do. Thanks a lot, Steve. Thank you. Don't miss Steve Adubato and co-host Raphael P. Ramon each week on Inside Trenton, Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. on 13th and Sundays at 7.30 a.m. on NJN Public Television.